Hey, 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 good day, ladies and gents. My name is Helzo and I am discussing. And I have a very, very big smile on my face today. Why? Because it is over. It is over. And you know what I'm talking about. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Hell, the title of this video should tell you enough. The Rings of Power has finally ended. And it ended poorly. It ended in absolute disgrace. And it probably will be the last we see from Rings of Power. And I know there have been news articles that are saying that it's going to be renewed for a third season. Maybe that w will be the case. However, even if it was renewed, then we know that it's not going to be successful. Because the viewer retention, as per reports and as per charts in uh, sites like Samba TV, are abysmal. This post from Nerdrotic from yesterday speaks volumes. You see that the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power season 2 is on ninth place on the streaming charts. This kind of feels a little low, don't you think? Ninth place and especially when you have so much money and so much dedication and so many devoted fans watching it. How is it in ninth place? Well, let me tell you a little secret. Nobody is watching that show. All the people that are praising it are all the same people that have been praising. There haven't been any new people. There haven't been any new fans. And a lot of those who praised season one or even at least a couple of episodes have already disappeared and have joined the realm of mental decency. But enough about that. We are here to kind of review episode 8. And surprisingly, after the abysmal opening scene of seeing uh, during the old mining with a battering ram, which he probably stole from the orcs, and that's why they had to use that horrible contraption, of the Ravager on the walls of Eregion, we're actually introduced to none other than the Balrog, which we all knew that is going to appear and is going to be awakened around 4,000 years too early as per canon. However, I must say, for what it is worth within the scene itself, if we look at the scene as what it was in and of itself, it was a good scene. It was nice. It was ripping off Peter Jackson and the books. However, it was nice. We got the whip. We got the, the Balrog pulling during the old towards him, even though not entirely. We got to see the Balrog in all its glory. And I must say, yeah, that looked good. It, it, it Visually, it looked good. However, it just shows that you cannot improve upon perfection because the Balrog here in the Rings of Power does look amazing it, it it looks nice but still it, it's kind of underwhelming to see that this is the best cgi that they can come up with even though it's a tv series but it's also good to see that they at least kept to this baroque and they didn't uh, make him pink or purple or something and i'm absolutely sure that there were talks about that uh behind the closed doors so this scene in and of itself was nice i i should admit that uh it, it was nice the during the old jumping to fight the baroque and just clashing his axe into the baroque sword was nice and it was absolutely pointless when you return to the overall picture it's pointless it shouldn't exist it sh the baroque shouldn't be awakened they shouldn't have done any of the things that they did it's just there to give you a visual satisfaction to watch it to turn your brain off and just watch the pretty pictures and that's exactly why this scene was made it, it made no sense whatsoever and that's pretty much the tone it sets for the entire episodes we see so many stupid things happening first of all uh, we see that around here our resident hood elf is alive and well even though he was brutally stabbed by adar just last episode and he was left to die how did that happen i don't know elf magic or some sort now you you might argue that Gilgalad healed him with his ring as he attempted to heal Galadriel at the end of the episode, but this was never shown, and there was actually no mention of anything that could have happened all with Hood Elf. He just shows up on screen and starts throwing knives, starts killing orcs. That's it. It's like episode seven didn't happen, and that brings me to a very very. Uh, troubling conclusion when you're writing a book when you're making a movie one of the things that 
a lot of writers have told me is to know the ending and to fill up the activities and the scenes to, that leads toward that end. And I don't think anyone that was making this show had any idea how it's going to progress. I truly believe that they filmed episode per episode as it happened. They didn't film scenes from the next episode earlier and they didn't have any strong connections to tie up from one scene to another. And this is maybe in my opinion part of the pacing issues of season two all the teleporting all the inconsistencies as at which point in time something is happening because we see a lot of things that just can't happen in the, that short amount of time like the forging of the nine rings going from and to moria at least five or six times in a span of a single day going to get Gilgalad's army and arriving at the region while the siege is happening seemingly and doing it on foot if you can uh, imagine that and yeah the episode 8 is basically just a continuation of everything that was wrong w in the entire season with an addition of a lot of goofy stuff that should not have happened i'm gonna give you another example galadriel while merciless is stabbing some orcs who pose absolutely no resistance to her as we can see it in the scene, she just goes, stabs, goes, stabs, goes, stabs, and nobody actually even swings at her, even though they had several chances to do that. And as she exits uh, with the refugees from the, the tunnel, she's suddenly surrounded by orcs, and they want her, and they want uh, what they got, and they want to kill everyone. So Galatio does the stupidest things ever. She unbuttons her shirt and shows the nine rings in the pouch. And instead of the orcs just killing her and taking the nine rings, they just take her hostage because she told, if you uh, spare them, I will come willingly with you and I have these gifts. You could have killed her. You could have just killed her and take the gifts. She already escaped once. She already killed a bunch of uh, those orcs. Why would you want her back? She, she poses no tactical advantage because the army of Elrond and Gilgalad is already destroyed. They're all also captured as we see in the episode. And there's absolutely no reason to keep her there. But they do. And she goes to Adar, who took her ring from Elrond in the last episode. And he was wearing it. He was like an elf, like without the scars and everything. And I fully expected for Galadriel to recognize him and say, Celeborn? But she didn't and she asked him his name and he's like my name is something that was given to me a long ago it's meaningless and you're still thinking if that's Celeborn and he probably could have been but they killed him the orcs betray him because Sauron took control of them yada 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 and they kill him and there's no more a Adar hence if the showrunners at all have any idea how to write a prequel, that would not be Caliborn, but apparently we're gonna have to wait for season 3 to find out. I cannot wait. At the same time that this is happening, Sauron kills Celebrimbor because Celebrimbor is like, you're n you're only the deceiver, you're only evil, you're like, he's yapping as he's made into a human pincushion. And you see Sauron crying. You see him crying. This is the scene, by the way. This is exactly what we see. This image of the ultimate evil of Middle-earth just being remorseful and being, I don't want to be like this. I am just who Morgoth made me through our playtime that it was actually torture. Which is completely breaking of everything that Sauron is. And actually, I have to admit something. Charlie Vickers, who's playing Sauron, with a, with what he's got as a role and as a character, he's at least executing it very well. I mean, within what he's given as a role and as a character, he's doing what he's told in a very good way. He's acting okay with the materials he's given. That's something I have to give to him. Yes, it's a stupid role. It's a absolutely abhorrent portrayal for Sauron. But but what he does is good with that role we also get uh, gandalf who finally learns his names he's meeting the dark wizard and i don't know how anyone can even remotely convince me that this was not saruman 
because he tries to act like Saruman and he's just as deceitful as Saruman. I don't know who they are probably going to name him to be because the two blue wizards don't have names or the names that they have are very obscure and it would make zero sense especially when the dark wizard is dressed in kind of white and he's with the long beard and he constantly calls Gandalf my friend you're the one who told us you're the one who told us we have to be here to defeat Sauron and this kind of looks like the initial uh, motivation for Saruman to stop at nothing to defeat Sauron which is kind of in line with the books I mean with very very huge reservations but it is kind of in the ballpark of what we have seen from Saruman and of course he's uh, absolutely evil from the beginning and then they use the force because this is apparently medieval Star Wars and he leaves some rocks he kills some uh, hobbits or harfoots or stores or whatever you want to call them and then he leaves and says, when you come to your senses, uh, we'll talk again or something like that. And Gandalf rescues the other ones. It turns out to be a test. Uh, he, found, he finds his staff and then he goes with Tom Bombadil and they sing. And he's gonna be on his way to his adventures. And everyone uh, from the stores and the Harfoots call him Grand Elf because he's a Grand Elf. And somehow that leads him to say, Gandalf. That is what they're gonna call me, isn't it? Which is, again, kind of ripping off uh, the scene from the two towers where Gandalf the White appears and Aragorn says Gandalf and he says, Gandalf, that's what used to call me, Gandalf the Grey. So it's every chance this show gets to rip off Peter Jackson and the books and just introduce even the smallest member berries in the absolute most inappropriate time they do it this is amazing to me this is actually an art form to be so bad at even introducing member bears because you can introduce those things you can do it it's not an inherently bad thing because it does kind of take you back to the other story that you used to watch and if done right you can see the origin of said scene act or saying and it can feel good but in this show nothing none of this feels good and i can talk about the fight scene between galatrio and sauron which was stupid as hell and she basically plunges herself off a cliff which which is probably a hundred or more meters high she falls to the ground sauron is angry and doesn't do anything uh, magical to go with at least search her corpse for her ring which was in his grasps almost and she actually survives and she gets healed by Gilgalad and elrond with their rings with her ring and elrond's ring and Gilgalad's ring sorry i'm totally getting confused as to what's happening already which is another ripoff because you see Gilgalad speaking in that high elvish voice that the the might that we see in the Peter Jackson movies when they're trying to heal Frodo and it's generally used when you're doing some sort of a spell and they heal her because she was stabbed by Morgoth's crown which I'm sure I am absolutely sure and I can wager money that the crown is going to be melted down and it's going to be made into the Morgul blades that we see in the Fellowship of the Ring. I am absolutely sure because her wound is the same. It runs deep. They talk about it and it's, it's going to be exactly that. I'm sure of it. I'm willing to plays down money and bet with anyone that this is going to happen and we have several scenes that feel like an ending but then you constantly switch to the next scene just like the ending of uh, the return of the king you have Numenorians uh, setting in on Pelargir and you see the absolute douchebag Malfoy Joffrey is leading them Isildur is angry he's going back to Numenor apparently Elendio is leaving because at a very fantastically uh, quick pace uh, the the king starts to hunt down the faithful and that's because of one letter that allegedly accuses every faithful to be in line with Sauron and Queen Muriel to be also in line of Sauron because she survived that sea monster which I don't know what was written in the letter 
I don't know exactly what the letter was, who sent it, how it was forged. Nobody is explaining that, but everything happens in about five minutes. They just read the letter, they post immediately signs that their faithful are going to be hunted, they're going to hunt them, and everything is done by nightfall. And that's it. Things that have been happening in the span of years in the books are reduced to merely two hours in the show's universe, which is extremely idiotic and it feels like exactly Game of Thrones season 8. Same things, same problems, same inconsistencies. And yeah, uh, talking about it until now, you might think that I'm just rambling and pointing out different scenes and just not being very thorough with my review. That's because I truly do not wish to review the episode as it is because this episode is part of the whole season and it is the same. I don't have anything new to say that apart from just describing the scenes but if we have to look at the whole season it is just three or four events that have happened within the show's time in the span of five days or less this is what has happened you have the placing of the rings within the elves you have the forging of the seven rings and the forging of the nine rings and everything else and this feels like it has happened in the span of let's say four or five days within the show because you didn't get any sort of time progression done right and this is the major problem of the show apart from the law breaking if i have to talk about the law breaking we're gonna spend at least five days because nothing nothing in this show was in line with the lore and the little things that they did insert that can be considered to be true to the lore were absolutely destroyed by the following events connected to those initial ones. And that absolutely destroys what we see within those scenes. I'm no longer angry about the show. I mean, it ended. And we knew it's gonna, it was going to end. And we were expecting and we were hoping that it was going to end sooner. And at the end, this show has left us nothing of value apart from content creation this show did not leave anything to cling on or to rewatch. you didn't have almost none of the enjoyable scenes that you would expect in a tv show you didn't have any good story progression you didn't have any good character progression you didn't have any good usage of the lore that you were given and whatever stories you could have used, you perverted. And so you have left everyone who is a fan of Tolkien and has at least a smidge of sense and individual thought within them, just empty. Because this show is going to be forgotten faster than you forget a random face on the street. It is never going to be a lasting cultural phenomena. It is never going to make people watch it over and over again it is never going to be re-released it's never going to get an update or a extended edition it's never going to make people want to sit down and watch it even after 20 years no what people are going to probably be doing now is cleanse themselves and wash away the filth of the show by watching the original trilogy and even by watching the hobbit which is much better than this show you see no matter how much money you pour into a project if the core of that project is flawed then you won't be able to save it even if you dump not not one billion five billion ten billion you can dump as much money as you want you can hire even the best actors you can hire a whole country to be your film set it's never it's not going to work because at the core at the core of everything you still have a flawed disrespectful story that desecrates the memory the legacy the teachings the books the works of one of the greatest writers of all time and you're blatantly desecrating everything that he has created and trying to replace it with yours and saying this is going to be better it's going to be much much more unique and we're inserting our vision into it and we can do it better and i don't care what some stupid talking professor says that there is no such thing as canon in lot of dreams no there is it is on paper it has been well established and this is canon 
And I don't know how much he got paid to say those words, but I'm sure that if he was a true talking professor and true to the talking works and a fan, he would never even consider uttering those words and he would not have mispronounced Gandalf's uh, Valinor name. Anyways, that is all I have for this video today. I hope that you will excuse my whole rantings and just passing through the scenes because I just wanted to explain to them as quickly as possible and not give them too much attention just like they didn't give too much attention or any towards what they're supposed to be or at least making them uh, at least a bit sensible and at least for the next two years this is going to be probably the last or one of the last videos that i'll make regarding the rings of power we are now going to be waiting for the nielsen charts we're going to get be waiting for the official viewership results and i'm sure they're gonna be just as lovely as i imagine and hey if it gets renewed for a third season well we'll have some content later on so thank you very much please press the like and subscribe button on my channel follow me on my socials and support me on my patreon where i raise money for homeless animals and animals in shelters and join my membership on youtube to support me directly here i have some good emojis some good tier perks that you can enjoy and it will give you a lot of access to all stuff that I would not be posting on YouTube exclusively. Thank you very much. My name is Hyazu. This was Disgusting. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers and stay fresh.